Hi, it's Dr. Ken here with you. Uh, this is an AC practice knowledge assessment video. And what I've done is I've uh, taken T1 to T7, that's topic 1 through to topic 7 of the National Training Package, and created some questions. The reason I've gone part 1, part 2 and part 3, there are three parts, is that uh, it would make a very long video to do as one great big video. So I've broken it up into three smaller chunks to make it a little easier to handle. So how does the video work? There's basically four slides per question. So the first slide poses the question or the problem. The second slide is just the same question but I put a little green pause uh, on the screen to say, you know, for you to pause the video there and for you to try and nut out the problem. Then the next slide is what I call a pause hint. So again, you, I will give you some explanation or some hint. Again, if you haven't been able to answer the question, pause and see if you can answer the question. And then finally, when you move on, I'll give you the answer and explain the why that's the particular answer. So that's how the videos work. It's kind of ask the question, pause, give you a hint, pause, then give you the answer with an explanation. So here's our first question. What is the effective DC value of an AC voltage? There are four choices. You can have peak to peak voltage as a choice, maximum voltage, the root mean squared voltage, or the average voltage. So here's our first pause. Pause here. I'll play a little bit of background music while you pause and think about it. So we're back again now. So we'll move on from the pause to the hint. So here's the uh, hint slide. I'll just turn my pen on. And uh, the hint is the effective DC of an AC signal wave is the calculation of the effective area under the curve of the sine wave. So we're kind of interested in, in this area here. How much of that area represents a DC value. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the area under the curve. I'm just quickly colouring that in. This is achieved by taking the instantaneous values at even increments over the entire wave. Then we take the square root of each of those, we add them together and divide by the number of instantaneous readings. And then we take all of that and we then take the square root. We've taken all the instantaneouses, we've squared them, we've added them together then we've done an average and then we've taken the square root of all of that. So that's your hint. So now we'll move on to the answer. So what is the diff effective DC value of an AC voltage? The answer is the root mean squared voltage. So as its name implies, it's the square root of the average squared back again. So root mean squared, or we just abbreviate it to RMS. Question two, calculate the angle Y. So have a think about how you might go about calculating the angle Y round a right angle triangle with the adjacent at 300 millimetres and the hypotenuse at 500 millimetres. So I'll pause here. So we'll move on now to the uh, to the hint. So here's the hint. Uh, the hint is this is trigonometry. So it's ratios around a right angle triangle. 
So you've got to think about uh, which one you're going to use. And if you're going to use an adjacent and a hypotenuse, then it's probably going to be the cos of the angle. So again, uh, turn to your equation sheet. So pause here if you need to. So now let's move on to the answer. So here's our answer. So again, this is trigonometry, ratios around a right angle triangle. The cos of the angle is the adjacent on the hypotenuse. So the cos of the angle is 300 divided by 500. It's going to give us the ratio, and the ratio, or the cos of the angle, is 0 0.6. And to work out the actual angle in degrees, we would go cos to the minus 1. 0 0.6 converts our ratio back to an angle, giving us 53.1 degrees. So now, question three. The time taken for an AC waveform to complete one complete cycle is called. So the time taken for an AC waveform to complete one cycle is called amplitude, period, frequency, or the peak value. And let's pause there. So we're back again. Let's move to the hint. So here's our hint. So what do you think from our hint on the screen? We've got a, a drawing of a sine wave in this particular case. So what represents one full cycle? Which term? From the start of the wave in one place to the finish of it in the same place, one full cycle on. Okay, it's time to move on to the answer. So the answer is the period of the wave. So the hint there was the time taken. So the words time should have been a hint to uh, what was going on. So I'll just underline that, time taken. Uh, amplitude has nothing to do with time. Uh, the peak value has nothing to do with time, so we could have eliminated those. Um, and the ones that do have to do with time, so frequency was to do with time, and period. So frequency is the number of times we go through a period in one second, but to go from one complete cycle, it's just called the period.